Welcome everyone to another episode of Dynamics Corner. In this episode, it is a very special episode because we're right next to each other. I'm your co-host, Chris. And this is Brad. This episode was recorded on October 14th. Chris, Chris, Chris. We're right next to each other, but it doesn't look like we're right next to each look, other. Look, 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 look. See? <laughs> oh, wait, your finger went into my screen. I know. It's what? Wait, let me... Wait. Wait, wait, how come I can't go into yours? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, no, great. We it's Here we are, day one of a community summit, North America, here in San Antonio, Texas. I, I want to go get some steak and a cowboy hat. See, I should have bought a cowboy hat. We have to do another recording with the cowboy hats, which we're going to get. Yep. But in this episode, we had the opportunity to just learn a lot about what's new in Business Central 2024, wave two for both reporting and Power BI with what I call the year of reporting and data analytics. With us today, we had the opportunity to speak in person with us in the same room, Kenny. Sometimes, Kenny, thank you for joining us today. Here we are, day one of Community Summit North America in San Antonio, Texas. How are you liking San Antonio? Oh, I only had a fish taco at the hotel before <laughs> my first session, so <laughs> I uh, I arrived noon. Uh, I've, I've, I uh, I left Fargo, North Dakota, five a.m. this morning, and I arrived here at noon and got a fish taco and directly to our first session. So that's uh, that's the kind of Santonio I've seen. So, so it's the usual travel where you show up and you see a, a, a room. And, uh, oh, yeah. Just like they put you in the, the, the basement to do work, they put you in the, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. a, a room here to not see anything. Well, hopefully you get to see more um, as you're here in San Antonio. And, and again, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, here we are at the Community Summit, uh, which is a big event, but also... We recently had the release of 2024 Wave 2, which is something that's also extremely uh, important and has a lot of features and functionality with it. So uh, a couple of things I wanted to speak with you about is what's new in 2024 Wave 2 with Business Central for reporting. Wow, that's, um, that's, that's a lot of things and a lot of small things. So let me just start with the small things. So for anyone working with layouts, we did a like 10 small features just to make that easier and uh, we have a video on that for for our business central launch event where you can kind of see all the small little tricks i call it all the little all the little things we did to make that easier then for document reporting so anything where you send your quotes or your sales invoice to a customer we added a lot of things to the word layout feature um highlighting three things i would say the first one is freeing up the word feature called sections and that's a, a huge thing um that <clears throat> this means that any there's a lot of things in word that is bound to the section so uh, things like your margins your paper orientation your water watermarks your footers and headers and by doing like by enabling this in your word layout you can actually change all of these during your layout so let's say that you have an invoice or something you sent to the customer where page two would be nice to have a white table you can just change your margins and your orientation on that page two in the same layout so that's number one number one it's, Num yeah number, <laughs> number one of a lot it's it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a lot to digest but i'm yeah. happy to see the direction that yes. we're moving with business central and the word layouts yeah and uh, we'll go with the other ones i have a few comments on this but i'm, I'm excited to hear yeah number two number three number two through ten. Is, um, support this was kind of a poc i wanted to, to see how I, I knew we could do it but now it's also part of the standard layout and that's a themable layout what this is, is changing our standard layouts in Word so that whenever you go to 
the layout option in Word and change the office theme, everything uh, changes to the theme. So colors, fonts, everything. So what this means is, and I'm actually going to do a demo here at the keynote tomorrow, but this will go out after, I guess. We'll try to put it out as yeah. quickly as possible. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the demo tomorrow and the keynote is a marketing head of marketing wants to do something fun for Halloween. <laughs> so what they want to do is they want to have Halloween themed quotes they send to customers. Right? That would be fun. Now Halloween is also about scary. And <laughs> and maybe maybe it's for some developers that seems like a scary thing. And then it's not. You just they can actually just go and download the word layout for the quote. They can go and change the theme to something gothic like a gray theme or maybe a Halloween yellow one or orange one. And I even did a co-pilot in paint and asked for a gothic watermark and got that generated and then incorporate that as a watermark in Word. And that takes all in all five minutes. Upload back to Business Central and now your quotes is, uh, is Halloween themed. See, that is... An excellent feature because I know you're talking about doing that for fun with Halloween as a demonstration, but I could see how a user of Business Central can incorporate that into their business mm -hmm. where they may have something seasonal, yep. where they may want to put a promotion. I know a lot of partners or even other customers, if they even go into a conference such as this, they put a watermark on their email signatures yeah. or other documents visit us here, and now they can easily change that. I really get excited and uh, AJ and I had talked about this in our uh, academy session this past weekend with the, the developers who were there to learn and move forward and grow with AL development is we're really taking and separating the business logic or the data from the user interface in the report, giving more control and easier control for the appearance of their reports to the users of Business Central, mm -hmm. and it doesn't take a lot of effort for them to be able to change it. And that's why I really like the theming of it, because you can change it, as you had mentioned, for uh, an event, or you can change it just because we want to change the look of our report for... Christmas. Uh, yeah. for, I, for anything. Next yes. thing is Christmas, yeah. and then yeah. next thing is our, I don't know, our Easter sale, and then our summer sale, and, and suddenly you have exactly the seasonality of your documents and you don't have to pay a designer for it, you don't have to pay a partner for it. It's just five minutes in Word of things you already know in Word. And speaking of Word, I think a lot of business central developers need to go back to school. <laughs> because I, I know I had this challenge last year where I challenged like part, uh, business central developers, tell me what's not possible in Word. And then I did all of it most of it, actually, probably a few things I couldn't do, but most of it was possible in Word, and to be honest, easier, because it's just in there, it's built-in functionality, um, just do it. Yeah, and I think it makes it accessible for small, medium-sized businesses where, you know, they, they want to be able to make it more fun, and, you know, especially for small moms and pops, to be able to have that theme. Well, with with that word, and I've had a number of conversations as well. There's there's a lot of talk between you know RDLC, Word, Excel, the different layouts. Uh, one of the points that you had mentioned, where if you ask somebody something of what you would do with a report and the ability to be able to do that in Word or not in Word, sometimes I even ask the question is it the right tool for what you're trying to do? Because there's often, you know, I always joke with everybody with Copilot, it was like, well, Copilot didn't do this, it didn't do that. But if you pause for a moment and say, it did 80% of what you needed to do, it gets you started, it saves you yeah. some time. So the same thing comes with reporting. If you're trying to do something in a report, is it really the proper tool for it? Is it something that should be done in the business logic or is it something that should be done in Power BI or another tool? And that's one of the challenges to you know, portray when you're designing and architecting is make sure that you're using the right tool before you're saying, well, it can't do something for me. It's put it in perspective of let's analyze the proper tool. So mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing I tried to keep in mind and to promote that 
you know, it's not intended to do everything, right? It's intended right. to do, you know, certain functions and and be able to present and create your documents and not necessarily be a big Power BI type reporting because that's where a lot of, hopefully we can talk about, effort has also been made into Power BI reports to get more analytical data reporting. Yeah. If I just may say the, the final third thing we did Yes, before. yes, yeah, I was trying to get you go, but I have comments on all of these. I get excited. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's interesting. Something we actually wanted to do for the product since we released Word Layout 10 years ago in NAV 2013 is a Word add-in for the editing. Yes, areas. I'm excited for that one. And I think 10 years ago that was not so easy to do. It re probably required some VBA coding and a lot of special skills that maybe was only for the like the office office developers in a sense now if since then the office team have or the microsoft 365 team have released a javascript api for office which means that f it's actually fairly easy to create a word add-in now and that's what we did we we created a word add-in that can do new concepts in for Word layouts. And we started with the things that are most difficult in Word, which is conditional visibility. Mm. And that's that's the new layout controls, as we call them. So we try to, to say that the, the content controls you have today, where you map data to the document, uh, we then talk about layout controls instead for something that controls kind of conditional Wow. like logic in the layouts. So that's a great new feature too. Now there's yeah. a word add in, and I'm assuming there's a desire and intent to increase the functionality of that word add in with word reports as time progresses right. to, uh, to facilitate the creation of uh, word reports. There's a lot of new features. I'm excited with this. And again, it goes back to, I like to comment about going back to school. It's yeah. sometimes, uh, you know, with the changing of the technology, the changing of the language, the changing of the application, it's important to stay up to date with it and understand the usage of it and how you can use it. Um, I'll ask you a question also with this that you're talking about. We talk about the excitement of Word. And I heard some comments in some of the sessions that I went and uh, had attended today. Where does this leave the RDLC reports? Uh, because this was a question from a specific customer during a session uh, that we were talking about, you know, some tips and tricks for um, Business Central. Sure. So I think the question is not so much, much RDL reports, but more maybe, I think there are two questions. Will the capability of using RDL layouts go away in the Business Central platform? That's question number one. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, no, that will not go away. So RDL is a core part of Power BI uh, patinated reports. Um, it seems like that technology is there to stay. And therefore, I don't see that going away as a capability in Business Central. However, the second part of that question is, how about the usage of RDL layouts in the base application? And that will change. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I see happening is that over the next years, you will see less and less RDL layouts in the base app. And we will modernize the report objects um, to be able to cater for a new world of Excel and Word, where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Some reports of, uh, that have been in the product for many years will go away because there would be modern alternatives with either Power BI, data analysis, or Excel. Um, you will see new features in reporting like being able to deprecate a layout. Mm. You can't do that. Today. Yes. Um, you will see likely see new features in the report object to hide certain or at least yeah, hide certain columns in data items that were for, from, for the past. So by doing this, we'll be able to keep reports functioning with, with RDL layouts, add new layouts that don't exist, that, that don't use old columns that are not needed, there will likely be new features in Word um, 
in the word add-in so that maybe we can have system, um, just like in, in Excel today, in Excel layout, you have this system metadata mm -hmm. worksheet where we stamp in metadata about the report, metadata about the request, and so on. So in the Excel layout, you can easily have company name, which user it was, what date, and so on, things like that. The same concept will likely surface in the Word add-in as well, as system, or even in the, in the data set, so that when you, when you in the in the future create a Word, um, a, a, a report with a Word layout, you don't have to build all this company and all of that into the data set. It's just there, and that will also simplify a lot of the data sets because. Why, why do you need to code the company name in the data set? That's stupid. Yes. Let's, let's do that in the platform and just once for all. That also means that the person doing the layout will have the same look and feel of that data set no matter which report they are in when they lay out. And all of this is, let's say, UX for a different type of user. If it's a developer, maybe it doesn't matter so much the usability of the data set. Yeah. But for an end user, it matters a lot that the data set is understandable, which also means we will likely have two tips on report data set I columns because we can surface them in the layout tool and in the, in the word add-in so that you can see, oh, this, this field is about blah and this field is about blah. So a lot of the features that we'll build into the reporting platform or just make it easier for for the for a different type of user to to lay out reports. See, I, I like where the direction of that's going. Yeah. So to go back to the answer to the question, just to put back to you brought up the two points of two questions. The technology or the RDLC or the RD reports is not going away. It's the usage of the RD reports may change. So if somebody has an existing implementation with a lot of reports that they use to run their business, they don't have to worry about having to redo all of their reports no. through the upgrades. So it, that's an important point because uh, there's a lot of rumors now because they see uh, some individuals see a lot of effort being made to enhance the word and the Excel mm. reporting yeah. that the RDLC reports are going away. But it's a two-part question, case, yeah. as Kenny you had mentioned. It's you may have less RDLC reports. I call them RDLC mm -hmm. reports within Business Central yeah, for the uh, base uh, application. Yeah. But the technology is there, so anything that you have invested in that's running Correct. your business uh, that's important to you, you still would be able to use. I mean, so. we are in the, we're in the business of ERP, and we as Microsoft can't simply go and break thousands of customers' document reporting or any, any, doc, like any reporting. We can't do that. I know we did it with the classic client, the classic report <laughs> things, yes. right? We're not going to do that again. That, yes. that would that would not be fair. No, that's a good point. Thank you for clarifying for that because, again, it's, you know how it's, the rumors are and everybody hears bits, as a piece, bits and pieces of information and shares it. And hearing a conversation today and also hearing some conversations before I wanted to, I knew we were going to speak, I wanted to clarify that, which is important. But if you listen to this 20 years from now, it might be that that technology is going away, right? It's, I, mean, I, I can never, you can never... You can never promise anything that will right. never change, right? No, I understand, yes. Again, but I have no secret plan and no secret roadmap. I'm not showing to anyone that the capability of RDLC is going away in Business Central. Well, I'm hoping in 20 years I'm retired or not working, <laughs> so that's okay. No, I, that is, that's a good point that has to be inferred, that as, as technology and time evolves or passes, there may be a point where uh, Word may not even be in there anymore because of mm -hmm. a new technology comes out. But I'm more talking of the near future because there's a lot of attention in the mm -hmm. current wave and in future waves on reporting. Yeah. And just to clarify that, so uh, it is a good statement to say that we can't never we can't ever say never, but at least for the short term in some years, everyone can plan to uh, use what they have, which yeah. is uh, and which, there's no secret plan. There's no devious secret plan <laughs> hidden in the Microsoft basements in a, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. I say not about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we have other secret plans, which is great. No, I say that too. It's uh, you make me say uh, you make me think of something. I say with a lot of people, they say well, something to me, and I tell them, no, I sit up all night long figuring out how to make your life difficult, <laughs> and that's what we're doing. Is we have some secret plan <laughs> to purpose. let's purposely make your life difficult, uh, which is not the intent. <laughs> so there's some great features uh, coming in for the work. 
word reporting. I'm excited. I've been using it. I've been working with it. As I had mentioned, we gone we had gone through it this past weekend when we were going through some development training to have some developers again go to mm -hmm. school to work with now using word layouts instead of RDLC reports just to show how easy you can create an invoice or even an item list or something mm -hmm. and have some nice formatting it. Um, in addition to the reports, I see a lot with Power BI. Correct. And That's exciting. Yeah, I get excited about the whole thing. I, I tell everyone this is like the release of reports, right, or yeah. uh, data analytics. Uh, can you share with us some of the Power BI features yeah, that sure. were released? And if you have any insights into the future of that, too, I know there's a lot of questions about that as well. Yeah. Anything you of can course. say no, that I, from I the basement. So first of all, we, uh, we, we are adding 75 Power BI reports to the product in come November. Wow. Version 25.1. Um, seven different Power BI apps across finance, sales, purchase, invoice, sorry, uh, inventory, twice, two of them. One for projects and one for manufacturing. Um, and they come fully embedded in inside Business Central with, uh, so tell me so, uh, works, uh, bookmarking works. They are embedded on the role centers. They are embedded on the Report Explorer as part of the, these departmental role centers. They are multi-language, so if you switch to French, the labels will change to, to French because oh, we nice. need that. Nice. Um, what else? See, those are all yeah. exciting features yeah. because uh, you know everybody loves dashboards. <laughs> Yeah, or everybody yeah. wants the appearance of dashboards. Again, it's uh, so much energy and effort goes into putting data into Business Central to be able to pull the information out now easily. Yeah. It increases the power of it. You know, it's already a great application, and now for you to be able to easily... In many cases, it's like a selling point, right? Like, just having a dashboard built in. I mean, Kenny and I were talking about, you know, a, a competitor, and that's that was the deciding factor. Do you, do you have this dashboard built in? Now we can say yes. <laughs> it's right here, yeah. all the options. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm not a salesman, so I don't look at it as a selling point, but I do see it as enhancing the power of the application for those using it and those looking to use it. And yeah. it's the ease of being able to have access to your data and in a dynamic manner. Right. right, that's the yep. important thing. Because I remember when I first started working, you created with the classic reports. I wanted a report, okay, give me this report. Oh, I want to be able to sort it this way. Oh, I want to be able to do it this way. Yep. And you required right. someone to make a modification. Now, here we are all these years later, and now with Power BI, today I want to look at my report this way, or I want to look at my sales this way. I can easily mm -hmm. make that change without having to... It's not necessarily, say, have a developer do it, you don't have to take, wait for the time for somebody else to do it. Correct. I mean, right. And that to me right. is the important thing because it's a time saver. Right. Because how I want to look at my business today may not be the same tomorrow Correct. or the data or the analytics. So these are all applications that I try to push with some of these features that it's not necessarily the cost or, how, or it's how long you have to wait to get it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, like I said, time changes rapid or things change rapidly and day to day you may need something uh, different which is important and I think this also unlocks so we do have a lot of things already on docs for Business Central on how to track your KPIs with Power BI metrics for instance which is an amazing feature in Power BI the new reports will require a Power BI Pro license so for them to, for you to use them I, I, I joke that they cost between zero and ten dollars a month Meaning that if you're a customer that already have Power BI Pro, the new reports are free. If you don't have Power BI Pro licenses, you need to pay for that for the for the capability. And now the reports work right. Mm -hmm. Now with Power BI Pro, you also have this metric tracker. It's no code. You can any user can set up. I want to point to this number in this report, and I want to track it over time, and build a dashboard on that. Think about this for a moment. I am. This, that this is... is this is just you get this for free, quote unquote, for free because you you have it in your Power BI Pro license. Now we have we give you, I don't know how many, let's say 50 KPIs that you can track your business out of the box, and with metrics, if these are not tracked because they are computed by whenever you refresh, you can set up tracking over time on them your own. 
create a dashboard like that. It's called not it's called a scorecard. You can even embed that scorecard back in Business Central. You can have any KPI with these trackings, and you can track uh, set up rules for when you want to be alerted in Teams. So things like if you want to be alerted on a certain financial KPI is crossing a threshold, you can get an alert in Teams. You can start collaborating on that directly in in your scorecard with your colleagues, and you can ask questions and things like that. And because we now have Power BI content built in, all of these features light up automatically and just give so much more value. Uh-huh. That is the key. It's the value and the time. I'm I'm getting excited. I'm getting the chills thinking about it because because as you had mentioned, the ability to interact with the changing number, you know, to yeah. put it simply, yeah. is amazing. And to say, like you said, it's the cost. Or you know, it's free if you have Power BI Pro today. If it's a, a license cost, if you need it in the future. But it's what are you getting for that? It's some people focus on it, mm-hmm. whereas. Again, what are your options? You can either have somebody develop that for you, which will take time and cost money, and is it cheaper over time? And also, what's the carrying cost of that modification? Right. Also, what does it cost you to not react Correct. to a number? Right. And see, yes. this is those are a lot of the hidden costs or the hidden uh, portions of it that I think some, if you look at it differently, right? Maybe look at it from a different perspective. It's not ten dollars a month, but it's actually saving me in the future to make better business decisions. Yes, right. like your unrealized, unrealized gains yes. that you typically don't think about. Yes. And think about one, one employee not being able to track important KPIs for what they do. I think that's worth $10 a month. Like being able to do that is, is worth a lot more than $10 a month. I believe so. And the amount of hours, developer hours we've we put into this is is a lot. Like if you wanted to build these reports from scratch, it's probably take you mm-hmm. thousands of hours to get to where what we just give away for free. And if there are changes or updates, you don't have yeah. to make them. Yeah. See, that's the other part of this, which is important. Is it, it comes with the application. You no longer have to maintain those yourself because there is a carrying cost to a modification right. in an, any implementation, not just Business Central, yeah. uh, which is important. You can even, so since these are embedded as AL pages, you can use permissions to turn off the things you don't want. Mm-hmm. And similarly in Power BI apps, the reports behind the scene, you can turn off like visibility on the things you don't want. And that means you can you can also mix mix and match. Let's say that you want to take page two, five, and seven for the five finance app, and you keep that because they're nice, but your implementation of your liquidity KPIs are different, so you actually want to do your own for those. Fine, no problem. Yeah, I'd like do that. Some of those features. With the Power BI reports, and, and again, a lot of this, I, I bring some of these questions just from conversations that I have with customers or individuals implementing. Now that Power BI reports are uh, in Business Central within the same application, so you can see these dashboards. Uh, there's some questions with you know customers either migrating to Business Central from a previous version or moving over from a new application. Uh, they may have some legacy data that they need to still have for analysis. You know, years ago, some would say, well, you still have access to your old system, or we may bring some of the data right. over. With Power BI, uh, in the way that you have it embedded within Business Central today, is it possible to see some of that data Correct. Yes, in, so. in, in, okay. in line with the Business Central data? So you don't have to put everything Business Central. Yeah, yeah. that's a good Can point. you read it from an external source? Sure. So we actually, so since we, like we tried to be smart about engineering with the, with the new apps, and we didn't want AL developers to code anything. So what we did was we we wrote a code generator. So so let's say that you are um, the owner of this Power BI app uh, report that runs on some SQL servers or something, right? These reports are deployed to the Power BI service, but they're not like that's that's it. So you have you have a report with some pages, and you would like to embed them in Business Central. Here's what you do. You type in your report names, your teaching tips, because of course we want teaching tips. You, are, you put in information about the, the report um, IDs and the report pages, 
in an Excel workbook. Configure all of this in Excel. Then you run a command line script that reads that, and that script spits out an extension with all the generated AL code for all the pages, wow. for all, the, all of that. And you take that and you deploy that as a PTE, and that's it. Wow, I'm kind of <laughs> speechless now because it, that simplifies the data management in the in, in the analysis within Business Central mm -hmm. using Power BI reports with external sources. Right. So it's not yeah. only historical data, but there are cases where you know Business Central is a great application. But I've worked with implementations where they need another system to do something yeah. else mm -hmm. because Business Central is a tool. You use the tool to do the job, but now if they can take that data. Yeah. They don't need to. Look, they don't yeah. need to go to another system that can look at them together. They can do, that. Right. They can do with it all within Business Central. I forgot to say one thing though. That Excel workbook, you also configure your permission sets for all of this, and it generates all of that for you as well. Wow! <laughs> because we so the thing is we needed this for seven apps for seventy-five pages. We didn't want to write all that boilerplate code, so we just made a code generator, and that's available on BC Tech. So you can just go download it and use it in your project. So on the GitHub repo, BC Tech, it's the Microsoft uh, repositories. BC Tech has a lot of great, uh, you know, business central technologies, as yeah. I call it. It's uh, under so aka.ms forward slash BC Power BI samples, and that's where you find it. Okay, excellent. That's also our code sample for how to, to, to script the multi-language, which is a similar thing. We have a, you have a ResX file for each of your language. And you just uh, you do a command line tool, and we'll inject that into your Power BI. Because we needed that, and the tools we built for this project, we're giving to the community for free. So I'm kind of speechless now. I almost wanted to start writing Power BI reports. <laughs> it becomes <laughs> you, much easier. You're, 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 you're going to the other side now, you're going to do some BI stuff. Uh, I might have to start <laughs> doing analytics in BI because it's. Uh, I'm just impressed with uh, where this has moved, and if you just think of the evolution over time, you yeah. know, where we started, it's almost um, it's difficult to keep up, to be honest with you, uh, which is nice. Are there any other tips and tricks or so future all, yeah, tidbits or bytes that you can share with us? <laughs> so all the tooling I, I mentioned here is explained by Enrico, one of our developers, in the BCLE session on Power, and what's new in Power BI. So he has, he's demoing all of it. And those are all available on the BC YouTube, I believe. Yep, it's AK, ak.ms forward slash BC YouTube. All of the recordings from the Business Central launch event with what's new in Business Central 2024 Wave 2. Correct. And it's publicly available. Right, so it's uh, yeah. you could sign up for the launch event to register to watch the live Q and A to watch the live sessions, but the recorded sessions, if you weren't able to see them, are now available. Correct, and all of the sessions are available. Yeah, uh, but we're not done because in twenty five point two, so the December yeah, January ish release, um, we're coming up out with a Power BI app on the new subscription billing mod module. So That's right. So it will come with its own Power BI reports. Oh. Um, we are also cooking up on better dimension support for all the Power BI apps. So so they support your dimension setup. Again, it's the year of reporting and yes. analysis. I, I, I put, power, again, reporting and analysis. So Power BI uses analysis. That's great with the subscription billing. That mm. I see a lot like happening a, with subscri like subscription full, billing. Like a, that's like a full feature. Like everything you need, right? Like reporting is a big component of that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's excellent. And then we're sanitizing all our existing reports. We're documenting all of them, putting teaching tips. So in client help, we are making them available. I want to talk. That's secret, so you will hear of that in, in six months. <laughs> um, we're documenting, uh, trying to document all the analytical reports in, docu in our docs uh, with articles for each of them. Um, so we're trying to make discoverability of existing reports easier. Um, and some people say, why do you want to invest in writing documentation for reports that are 30 years old? Why don't you just scrap them? And I think, well, it probably took a developer and a program manager a week or two to come up with why this was a good idea to have. So some of them might not 
but there might be a lot of old gold there that needs maybe just need of some polish and still be valuable for the next 10 years so that's why i think it's still worth it to invest in like making sure that people know okay this report can do this for me and they can choose to say no it's fine i don't want it i want to use power bi but maybe for some scenarios this is this is fine and we'll document so people will know okay this these are the use cases and it seems like this is a good report for me and yeah i like that because it gives microsoft the opportunity to review the reports to see if they're still applicable for what they were created for mm -hmm. but also now users can see reports they may not know existed exactly yep. where it's i can't tell you how many times i've seen requests for a report that was already there yeah yes. because it wasn't easy to find so the discoverability of it with being able to easily see what it is is helpful they're really not letting you out of the basement with all of these things coming in. This is the year yeah. of... Um... I mean, we had just had a, a session with 200 customers here um, at UT uh, Summit. And um, our moderator asked, how many of people you know about the Report Explorer and the client? The Report Explorer is this link you can click where you, like at the top of the, of the, um, the role center where that shows you your reports and you have these departmental role centers probably 5% of people knew that existed, which means our main wow. discoverability feature, except for search and chat, the main one that shows you what are my sales reports, 5% people know that. That's, that's, low. that's insane, right? Then, then, it, it, then it, I'm not surprised that your customers don't know what reports exist if they don't even know where the report overview is. Right. And we need to tell them, we need no, to that's... explore, like tell them what, what's available. No, that's important. See, it's a lot of these features. Again, it's discoverability, yep. which is important. Uh, there's a lot there, and it, it comes out. Yeah, that's... Um... And functional consultants, they would benefit from that, too, because sometimes they, they don't realize that there's see, some, see, some of these reports. See, Kenny said, AL developers <laughs> need to go back to school. I think functional, functional consultants too. need to go back to yeah. school now, too, uh, yeah. with the application. It, it does. It's... A, it's it shows why it is important to keep up with like the launch event mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. areas yeah, because yeah. years ago back with Navision, the up the back way back the way back machine the updates weren't as rapid so right. if you, you learned the application you had a year to master it it was gold because they weren't having another update for another couple of years and you could survive on that because mm -hmm. there was a, a slow progression of change now with that rapid progression of change it's important to stay acclimated mm -hmm. correct uh, I use the word acclimated but to stay in touch with the changes of the software yeah right. um, which which makes it uh, more useful for but everyone. I think also as functional consultant this is also what what makes you the gold consultants or platinum platinum right this is the one where you already know you know what to tell a customer like, oh, did you know this? Or did you see this? That's the kind of consultant that a customer would like to have on, on their team instead of the consultant that, quote unquote, just do what they are told. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe they're missing out, the customer is missing out on, on smarter ways. So it's also a way to like, keep your value as a consultant by keeping up. And I know it's hard because there's so many things that are happening. I also know that because I've been a consultant myself, part of the job as consultant is non-billable. You you also need to to uh, sharpen your your saw. Yes. It, it, yes, it's true. I mean, because it's the same thing as using Power BI in the licensing to use it to analyze your business. Mm. The time that you spend to learn the application makes your uh, you much more of a valuable. Um, uh, teacher, user, or consultant of Business Central. Mm -hmm. So your ability with that no bill time is returned in the future. Correct. With uh, exactly. the implementation of customers and even internal. I mean, internal customers. It's uh, you know I don't know how the structure would be, but also spending some time each week. You know, I try to say spend a couple hours each week looking through what's new, looking through the notes. Mm -hmm. You know, I know myself. I have when I launch up my computer in the morning with the browser. I have a number of tabs with. Uh, just a number of different websites that I can see so I can keep up with things. Mm -hmm. just, uh, and then at that point, you know, like with the Yammer group that uh, for Business Central, for partners and such, I can keep up with things easily Yeah. in just a couple minutes a day versus trying to being, cram. I think just being aware, 
of it yeah. as well it makes a big yeah, difference. It's, yes. You may not need it then, but you're aware that exactly. when it comes, it's like, oh yeah, I remember we need to do this and dive deep into it. And I think the key here is not expecting people to spend a couple of hours a week because that might be a daunting task. Yes. Mm -hmm. But maybe just like when you want to lose weight or get in shape, maybe it's just that five minutes every morning. Yes. Consistently five yeah. minutes of learning and just say, okay, and many of the new videos on BCLE are bite-sized, so they are five to ten minutes. I like that strategy of the bite sizes you, you call it. I'll, I'll keep using that because I'll always go back to the, what you said to us every day, you know, many years oh, yeah. ago when you spoke with us. <laughs> How do you eat an elephant? Yeah. yeah. One bite at a time. And it's the same thing with ingesting data. You yeah. don't have to have the daunting task. And having those bite sized uh, nuggets, if you have 10 minutes, you have a nugget. If you have 20, yeah. You can see two nuggets, mm -hmm. and it's again, it's those small increments. That's what I found. That's why I said in the morning with me, yeah. I now have a habit of yeah. checking on a few resources online that I can keep up with yeah. the things that I would like to keep up with. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's another aspect of it too. You can't keep up with everything because there's just a lot of information. Correct. It's just a matter of focusing on what which area your area yeah. and your specialty, and I now know who to call if I come into another area that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, but and you're I, aware. Uh, but exactly, that's the key, is I'm aware that this exists, and I send everybody to Kenny if they have a Power BI question. <laughs> <laughs> sure. we're, we're, we're on this episode, we'll have to put Kenny's cell phone number, so if anybody <laughs> has any questions, uh, feel free to call him, uh, preferably at 2 in the morning. Uh, central time. Of course. <laughs> uh, no, that's great. Well, Kenny, I'm getting hungry. So... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes me when I'm hungry. So, but uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today to share uh, the so your insights and information yes. on 2024 Wave Two. We appreciate your support. We appreciate you spending time with us because I truly mean when I say time is the currency of life. Once you spend it, you can't give it back because any minute you spend with someone or doing something, you will never get back. So, anyone who spends any time with us, you know, we're grateful and appreciative for because you could be doing many other things. Uh, but you're here sitting with us, so we really I appreciate am. it. Yeah. <laughs> and we never even got to think, talk about what's coming next. Oh, we can so do that. We'll, we'll forget that. it. No, we can we'll do that do now. that in another video, maybe. <laughs> no. another, another. May maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to reconnect, so I want to hear it. What's, yeah. You know. No, I'm, I'm, I'll just, as, as a teaser, say that we have some, I think, some mind-blowing things coming up for April. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll definitely yeah. have to schedule this. Yeah. Uh, if you have time this week, we'll do it this week. If not, we'll Something do it. Something very, very complicated. Can you give us a Beautiful. hint? A tip? Or um, a hint? Or a little teaser? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, I mean, that's the idea with the teaser right there. A cliffhanger. Yes, yes. We'll, so we'll... We've got to get scheduled right away. Cause now uh, we'll schedule it after this call. Yeah. <laughs> now I wish... Now I really, you ever say something and you wish you could take it back? <laughs> I want to go back a minute or two and take back the sentence where I said I'm getting hungry and <laughs> just say, can you tell us what's next? Uh, but we will. We'll schedule that up and we'll have another episode where we talk yes. about what's next coming in April just for yep. uh, some other mind-blowing. Because if, if you say something's mind-blowing, well, my I, mind was already blown with what you told yes, us today. No, I, so. think, uh, I, I just think we have more, let's say, uh, more things coming up. In, in all these areas that uh, that will just make it easier, prettier, e more compelling, more self-service, more customer facing. And I think for, for developers and for developers, it's not going to be something that take your job away. It's probably something that will give you more interesting things to do with your customers. Oh, I definitely want to hear that. Um... Well, yeah, we had to get it scheduled after this. No, we we'll definitely scheduled. <laughs> no, again, but thank you again for your time, yeah, uh, and I look forward to seeing the keynote tomorrow. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you while we're here to talk about yeah. uh, other reporting aspects. Uh, and now we can go get something to eat. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. All right, ciao, ciao. Thank you, Chris, for your time for another episode of In the Dynamics Corner Chair. And thank you to our guests for participating. Thank you, Brad, for your time. It is a wonderful episode of Dynamics Corner Chair. I would also like to thank our guests for jo joining us. Thank you for all of our listeners tuning in as well. You can find Brad at developerlife.com. That is D-V-L-P-R-L-I-F-E. 
facebook.com and you can interact with them via Twitter, D-V-L-P-R-L-I-F-E. You can also find me at matalino.io, M-A-T-A-L-I-N-O dot I-O. And my Twitter handle is matalino16. And see, you can see those links down below in their show notes. Again, thank you, everyone. Thank you and take care.